So, TK, how is it going? What are yes. the news in your life? Well, I'm doing uh, pretty well. i am uh, got a friend putting in a good word for work. And my first question was, oh, is there a union? <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. We'll get into that later on this podcast. Um, uh, yeah, for, for I'm exercising now, actually. Um, uh, nice. Doing some, some weightlifting. So I'm, I'm a part of the Swoletariat now. <laughs> which is amazing, which is a thing yeah. that I need to join as well. You know, I need to find time in my life to do exercises to I, I really want to go and to the swimming pool on the regular and swim because it just it helps me so much to keep myself like in shape and feel better about myself is a regular mm. swimming it's just like amazing it did wonders to my well-being when i did it and uh, i unfortunately don't do this now and i <laughs> really want to this is one of my resolutions for the year to start doing it do it, you know, because I really when I, when I um when I started doing the regular exercises, which is like uh, uh, an exercise day, rest day, exercise day, rest day, going to that intensity mm -hmm. actually gives me energy and motivation, which is great. It it makes me feel so good, which is um you know part of the reason why I felt okay to come back to being on the on the podcast mainly. Yeah, uh, it, it does. Like, it, it, yeah, yeah, instead of looking at things like, oh, man, really? All right, let's get it over with. Now, mm -hmm. with almost everything, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's smash it out. Fuck yeah. Mm. Yeah, Charging because exercises is just amazing for that sort of thing. Like, uh, I've read somewhere that if, like, you struggle with shit, you know, and you just feel down, regular exercise really help you to revitalize your, like, your brain, basically. Because exercises mm. like other thing that um, are recommended to people with like clinical depression, for example, and with just mm, depressed yeah. people, you know, people with depression, it's just amazing. Because uh, if you actually manage to do it on the regular, it really helps you to keep your mind in shape and be stay motivated. Because it provides you with, it, it works on the basic chemical level even. Like it's so mm. good. Like, so, I, I love it when I see fellow comrades um, taking up, you know. Even just doing squats in front of the TV as you watch mm -hmm. TV, even people just doing that, just warms my heart to see people taking care of themselves. Because all, all you comrades out there are so beautiful and deserving of, of so much. I love exactly. you all. Exactly. <laughs> shout out to all the people who are doing that sort of stuff. Uh, I 100% endorse sports. Sports good. Email you, Jim. 2019. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so... Tonight, we have a very special topic for all you people who are, like, uh, are into the political left or, you know, and you're, like, on the internet, uh, like, watching videos and educating yourself on politics. Or mm. no, like, even, even if you're not, if you, even if you're, like, not the member of any community and you're just, like, stumbled upon this and uh, you were sent this or whatever, and you're like, hey, what should I do with all the bad shit? Like, there's so much bad shit. What should we do about it? And uh, uh, getting engaged in politics is difficult. Mm. It's difficult on so many levels. And uh, in my opinion, that's partially um, the way it's meant to be. Like, <laughs> our systems are designed that we think about politics four times, maximum two times a year. Right? Like, we actively do politics. We do mm. democracy. For some... For for some, it's uh, only when there's an election, and there yeah. can be years between elections for for a lot of people. Yeah, from my personal experience, I was really annoyed when I, the first time I was frustrated with our politics, like for real, uh, was um, when I understood that wait, all those people who run against Lukashenko in the elections, right? Run hmm. tons of those people, and they like every every four years there are different people. And I'm like, where are those people between elections? Exactly. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Where, wh 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 what, like, are you like 
helping people? Are you putting your work into practice? Because when I was when I first thought about it, I was like, wouldn't it make sense for like all those opposition people to like go and plant trees or something? And, like post about that, talk about that, make people talk about that? That would make sense from the you know PR standpoint. Uh, but also that would make sense from the ideological standpoint, the political standpoint. You're doing politics, you're making things better for people, hmm. despite the fact that you're not in office, because this is what you believe in. And that, that, that just didn't make sense for me. And um, then I understood, hey, maybe that's, that's, that they don't need to do that, because they, the, like, basically, in our case, not to go very deep into Belarusian politics, um, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> that's yes, another thing, completely different thing, Ryan. And uh, I'm making also a video about Belarus uh, right now. It's in pre-production, but I'm I'm working on some stuff about Belarus, some video stuff, short stuff, not an hour long. But um, we'll see. I'll I'll talk about that a bit there as well. But mm. basically, politics are designed that way. That it's all the time on TV, right? But how about doing politics? How about actually working, doing things? Uh, no, you do that when the election is. All the other times, it seems like you cannot even do anything. And um, I'm sort of like, at the same time, could say, yes, this is true, and this is not true. On one hand, yes, the system was designed that way, that you are engaged in politics to the minimum level. You just do it occasionally, right? Even, mm. even if you're not showing up to elections or doing nothing that that's even like not in the case of australia but generally that's even good for many other countries because like whatever you, we don't need you we need this our core population our core electorate to do what they have to do to vote for us and uh, help us stay in power but at the same time there is so much more that one can do uh between elections between votes hmm. to actually help people to be uh, a better, you know, uh, citizen, you know, one could say. There, there are many different um, aspects of democracy um, that are available to you. It's mm -hmm. just a lot of the time either it's not taught to you that you can use these different things or bourgeois politics will try to hide it from you as much as possible. Yeah. Even something as uh, simple as contacting your local representative. And that's our first point, actually. Yeah. That's what we start with. Could you please talk a bit about that, TK? Yeah. So in most, um, in most of the countries around the world, you will hear like um, uh, that there are, you know, well, we've got you know, 200 representatives in this level of government. And you might think, who are these people? Well, you know, this is this is you know one hundred and one politics kind of thing. You know, um, mm -hmm. these these d people are representing smaller um, populations around the country, so their electorate is basically a line that's drawn around a bunch of people, and they represent those people. It's very basic, I understand, but it's very important right. because. When you're in one of those boxes, you get a representative. Their job is to represent you and everyone in that electorate. What you can do is tell that representative what to do. Right. And that's and that for some will blow their minds. <laughs> <laughs> that blew because, my mind when I first learned about that. Like what? Yeah, yeah. So, so the election comes by, and you put you a tick next to a name, and then that name ends up being your local representative. It doesn't stop there. They have a platform that you wanted them to to put forward. You can Google then, that. Yeah, yeah, and and they they will put up this information on their website and and while they're campaigning and whatnot, and their party as well. If there is a part of a party, uh, the party will have a policy that you can read up. Um, the next step, like the next baby step, is um, making sure that they're actually representing you. Sometimes you'll see on the news that a big bill is coming up. And let's say you, you elected uh, someone who said they are anti-fracking, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a bill coming up in, in the, 
in the federal government that says that they're going to allow fracking. You should call up your local representative and ask them, are you going to vote no? Because we elected you to vote no. So you better vote no to this fracking bill. Right. Yeah. And this is actually one of the reasons why I am critical personally of uh, the system that we have in place. That it sort of like uh, at the same time removes responsibility from you, right? Because there is mm. this person in the parliament doing all the work for you, and you just vote for this person, and they get to do whatever they do um, based on the platform and whatnot, uh, with the motivation that they want to get reelected. But at the same mm. time, this sort of thing creates so much stress. And I must say that it creates stress for so many people around, like, I know that because, um, like, uh, this is important to mention now, because right. people will think, oh, damn, I have to be engaged in politics 24-7 every day of the fucking year to know <laughs> what is happening, who's voting for whom, call the representative, organize people to vote for representatives, and blah, 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 like, call the representatives. Mm. And it's so much stress, right? It's crazy because you get to you have to be engaged with all the terrible shit going on in the news, and uh, I must say that first of all, first of all, um, that's okay thing to feel, right? And second mm -hmm. of all, there is a great video on the topic, uh, and uh, it's made by in a col collaboration between Peter Coffin uh, and Philosophy Tube. It's called uh, "Should You Watch the News?" I'm going to link it in the description. And mm. you should watch it. And uh, it basically uh, covers this topic and talks a bit about it in detail. And um, I'm, uh, on my personal note, I would say that um, you don't have to be like engaged in every single issue that the parliament is on. You don't have to be this, you know, non-paid um, like member of the parliament who is all the time <laughs> engaged in whatever is going on and all the time participates. Because we have jobs, we have lives. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. But um, at the same time, if you have your issues, your issues, it's like your one thing that you voted for, right? It's like, I'm really voting because I don't want the pollution to f annihilate my community, right? Hmm. And I'm voting... I, I know I, I rambled on, on a bit about... Well? Um, I know I rambled on a bit about, you know, the basics of it, but it is, it is important that um, um, when politics affects you it's very important to know who's on your side exactly so when yeah so if this bourgeois um democracy is supposed to be you know this this wonderful thing that helps everybody then your local representative should be saying ah this one issue that's affecting you i can help you with that and it's important to know that if they are or are not doing that I, I, I think that's the point I was trying to get across, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And I want to say that, practical, practically, if you have your issues that you voted for, it would be really cool like if you were uh, aware of what they're doing with that because it's important to hold those people in power responsible. And the most basic thing that they themselves provide you with is contacting the representatives, elected representatives. And that's a very important first step, especially like it's not it's not a thing that you should do all the time, but it's a thing that you should do when needed, yeah. like when there are issues that <laughs> yeah. are like you, you, marriage. You, you can't you, you can't just that, uh, you, know? you, you can't just pick people. up the phone and, and say, "Hey, Bob, it's me again. How's it going? <laughs> you know, haven't yeah. talked to you since yesterday. Like, it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it out to be that easy, but yeah, yeah." <laughs> But most likely, you'll, you'll people, uh... leaving messages, letting hmm. them know it's not about that you ask, like you call them to ask, Oh, please, uh, would you be so kindly to do something? It's you literally calling and saying, Hey, I voted for you, you better, or I, I live in the area that you represent, and you better do X hmm. because that's important for me. And if don't, well, I'm not going to vote for you, right. Well, that's the thing that they're motivated by, and that's what you should do. And that's a great thing to do. If you have a functional democracy, semi-functional at least, like if you have that, but yeah. 
that's the thing that you should do because I can say from my personal experience that's not how things are done here. Like, mm. unfortunately, it's more it's more of a marker on um, how good of a politician is representing you rather than the system itself. Because yeah. if you call if you call their office and you get the politician and they say yes, how can I help you? Tell me everything. You have probably got a good person on your side, but if you get a secretary or a robotic answering machine and then you never hear back. You might not have the best guy. Yeah. You might not have your best interests at heart. <laughs> oh, I agree with you completely on this one. Well, I believe that's that's the point. Um, we are taught that this is where the politics end, right? This is where yeah. you vote for people once in four years or whatever, um, and then you like get engaged and call the representative, and that's like the the thing that you should do, right? It's like it's the woke politics thing. It's like whoa, what about you actually like, call them and ask them to do a thing? It's like, wow, that's what I call activism. That's what I call <laughs> fucking engagement, right? Actually, you're wrong. Actually, this is not part of the things that ended. They should do more things despite that, I think. You can do the things. The point is that we're not taught that we can do politics in other ways. But we can, mm. and we should, if we want to. And uh, I 100% Recommend you do other stuff that we're going to talk about. When we're going to finish the podcast here, yeah, we might as well. If we were like basically, um, if, if we, we were, were the government who wanted <laughs> you to do that and that's it, so on. And there are other things that we could talk about. First of all, uh, I think we should talk about. Um, uh, I, th I think a good segue yeah. that we can do is um, y uh, when you call. That representative, and we've said that a lot, and we're about to move away from it, don't worry. Right. When you call that representative, you're but one voice talking to that one person. The next step is to have many voices yelling loudly at the office of um, the representative. And by or that, at I the mean... people, at the, at the local community people in the yes, streets. Yes, yes. The next, the next step is organizing, getting people Community who think organizing. like you do. Yes. yes. <laughs> Community organizing. That's a great thing. It's a great thing to talk about. So hmm. maybe you live in America or you live in Britain or Australia. Well, let's say you have those two fucking parties, right? Yeah. Just like the left guys <laughs> and the right guys. And they'll both suck because they don't do shit. Guess what? There are other people in politics. What a shocker. What do they do? Fuck what I know. But some of them do some good shit. And you should look them <laughs> up. So, you go to Wikipedia, and you look, and you search political parties in my country. Mm. And you, you exchange the word in my country for your country, right? You're like, okay, hi. What the fuck? Why well, are there fucking 200 parties in my state? What is going on? Oh, yes. Everyone like will be... Uh, I hope, pleasantly surprised to see that there are actually so many more parties than there are actually in Parliament or government, uh, depending on where you are. Especially in America, there uh, there's more than just Republican or Democrat, and uh, Australia and as well. And there's, green, even. Yeah, yeah. In 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 um in uh, Australia, like there's more than just the Coalition and Labor. There's more than them. There's more than just Green Party as well. There's, there's hundreds. Oh, oh my so fucking well. god. I literally opened up a Wikipedia page as I said about Australia, a list of political parties in Australia. And I'm like, federal parliamentary parties, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's about like. Yeah. 15 federal non parliamentary parties. And I'm going insane. State parties. Yeah. Each state <laughs> has their own fucking parties. And there are a bunch of them. Flux Party, Socialist Alliance, Animal Justice Party. Australian Christians, Liberal Democratic yeah, Party, yeah. Shooters, Fishers, and Farmers Party. If you like shooting stuff and fishing and farming, there is a party for you. And like Pauline That's Nansen right. Party. Hey, I found the, 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 the terrible shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Pauline Hansen's One Nation Party. Oh no, we have oh to boy. go back. <laughs> Fuck, go back too far. <laughs> <laughs>
I think I think the main reason why we're mentioning all these different parties is that that um, is as an ideology. No, <laughs> stop it, Eugene. You've gone too far into the rabbit hole of of Australian oh. micro parties. Stop it. Yes, stop it now. Culturalism. <laughs> stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> It felt like a so, fucking giant squid monster was crawling out of my of the Wikipedia page, trying to <laughs> stro- like re- get away my kebabs and uh, get, remove all the people who have a different color scheme than I am. Oh no! Oh god. Um. Yeah. So the reason why we're mentioning that there are so many parties is that it's very important to take a step out of, dare I say, it, the mainstream media and look at what there actually is as opposed to what's being presented to you. So in that list of political parties in Australia, you'll see a lot of different parties with different names. You'll have the shooter for as an example, the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. The one now, I mentioned before basically. No. Yeah. So I've they they them. do actually the represent best. Yeah, they do actually represent the shooters, the fishers and the farmers. But when it comes to other issues, they are actually quite right leaning on social issues. Um, mm-hmm. So whenever there's like, uh, for example, um, uh, same sex marriage, I don't know for sure if the shooters, fish, fishes, and farmers actually supported that. So. Uh, they wouldn't get my vote, obviously. Okay. Just as an example. Yeah. Um, huh. You also have um, a party, I believe, called Animal Justice Party, which sounds like it's for you know the rights of animals. Right. But but when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to say immigration, they suddenly get very um right wing they're very oh no no we don't want any immigration we want to stop it just get yeah, so basically if you like cats and like piggies but you fucking hate the muslims they have a party <laughs> yeah. for you like yeah. it's so great there is a party yeah. for everyone out there yeah and what this shows is that um it's very important to do a bit more self education on these political parties Right. So the mainstream media will only present to you the parties that will be able to perpetuate the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. And they'll present they'll present to you uh in Australia for example. I know I keep going back to Australia. Well, they'll use present, your own they'll, examples because it's great. Yeah. They'll you, they'll present easy. labor and liberal because right. um they're the two biggest parties, of course. The majority of the people one... work for them, and so they would be interesting, right? That's right. And um, liberal are usually backed by rich people, and these rich people own the newspapers. Mm-hmm. And they are, and so you know, it's getting tinfoil hat level of stuff here. So they'll present the liberal party as you know the savior to the Australian working mums and dads. When in reality, um, all they're going to do is just um, cut taxes to big corporations and the corporations that produce the mainstream media. And actually, so, I don't. I disagree with you that it's tinfoil hatty. I would address <laughs> your view, like direct your view to British Isles, and mm-hmm. uh, very interesting study came out. They have a similar situation there, where Tory uh, is basically funded by rich people, and those rich people own newspapers, right? Hmm. Um, basically, they looked into all the mentions of Jeremy Corbyn and his politics in the news, in the papers, and they found out that I think in 90%, 90% of all the things that were written about Jeremy Corbyn are lies. Hmm. With I think one of the I think Daily Mail failed to accurately represent like zero percent of his actual program. 
They were this, talking this, about him in every fucking paper, and they managed to get zero percent in the study. So yeah, this is this, this is what's perfect, going on, people. Yeah, it's a perfect example of why it's important to uh, when you start to educate yourself on the actual machinations of of bourgeois democracy and the parties that are within it that you draw from many different sources in order to get a, a better picture mm -hmm. once you yeah and then once you properly educate yourself then you um are able to then organize with other people and know why you're going to protest your local representative yeah i would say that there is a very like this is an algorithm that i would recommend First of all, understand what sort of politics you're into. Do some hmm. tests online, think about shit, read some shit if you want to, right? Watch some videos, and like, get a feel of what sort of stuff you are attracted to. I don't, we, you don't need to find a perfect label. Uh, actually, I'm uh, a fucking social democrat with, um, like, Stalinist tendencies, and um, <laughs> also I'm, uh, like, very interested in the fucking French theory at the moment, and I'm ready to lose. And when I finish with that, I think I'll be ready to uh, like answer your question: What sort of party I'm voting for? Like, no, like you don't need to read all the yeah. shit. You don't need to read all the French theory. You don't need to be aware of all the political movements. Even you don't need that. You should understand what you're into. You should understand what sort of politics you would support. Are you more left wing hmm. or right wing? Do you think that the rich people should pay more taxes or? Do you, do you think that the poor people should be literal slaves? Maybe you're a monarchist hmm. deep inside, I don't know. Like, look into yourself. Like, figure it out. <laughs> then you go and try to find what sort of people, where, where the people like you are. Are they in the, one of the mainstream parties? Are they outside? Are they sort of both, right? Well, left-wingers, so I would say that, uh, and this is a left-wing podcast, and I assume that every, almost everyone who's listening to this one is left-wing. Mm. So, um, maybe not, I don't know, but uh, good uh, Australian politics, um, good example. So, communists, right, socialists and stuff like that, where are they? Mm. Communist Party of Australia, maybe. Socialist are... focus, uh, socialist faction inside of the Labour Party, mm. maybe. It depends. See, this, 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 is, this is a prime example. Um, you'll find comrades everywhere. Yeah. You'll find, you'll find that your friends may have the same views as you do, and your close relatives and friends might actually be uh, willing to march with you, or uh, do a mass letter campaign, or do a picket line with you. Mm -hmm. The important thing is to, uh, uh, you know, talk to them, essentially. Right. I agree. So mm, um, you should figure out what the people are doing in the first parties. You should find the guys yeah. who you're interested in. Get aware of the political program, what sort of stuff they want. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Maybe go to one of their events because they do a bunch of those, you know? Or if they're big enough, um, like they have their own um, like seminars, they have their own presentations, they mm. do events, they do protests. Go out there and be curious. That's one of the things that I think drives politics uh, for people who are just getting into it. Curiosity. Like, people with flags are interesting, you know? And mm. there are a bunch <laughs> of people with flags outside. Talk to them, ask them, what's up? What's your opinion on that? What's your opinion on this? Develop your own outlook. Mm. Don't need to join a party on day one, or don't need to join party at all. Just, like, figure out what this, what's going on, and maybe yeah. find you something you that you can stand for. You, you don't need to label yourself an anarcho napoleonist egoist and then just stick to that. And you don't need to be like, oh, I kind of like communism, so I guess I have to join the Communist Party. No. What you can do is you can learn from um, these different parties and whatnot. And you can um, talk to your friends and organize with your friends like, hey, how about we, uh, you know, or, uh, Pick a bunch of uh, stickers or, and like violate property laws together. That would be yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But you can actually do that. Yeah. And like getting to, you should understand that it's really easier to go to those big organizations 
because they already have established outlook on stuff, and that's uh, they already have established um, programs, and they do some work. Uh, maybe maybe it's not really uh, how do you do that? Um, maybe not even just political parties, but people who are in side of the politics. Let's see, food not bombs, great example. It's an anarchist organization, anti hmm. organization that does feeding the homeless. That's the thing. They feed people who want. Not even homeless. They just feed people. And um, it's, it's a great thing to do, I think, to feed people who need food. And you can help them. You can mm. help them. You can dedicate some of your time or money. You know, work for them. Do some, cook some soup for the peeps. And um, maybe, like, d distribute it between people. Or just bring some porridge for them. I don't know. Uh, if you have some. Uh, it's not that much more money for you, if it isn't, right? And just help them. And uh, Because if that's a thing that you believe in, that people should be fed, right? If the food mm. is not a privilege, but a, uh, a resource for everyone to survive on, and it's obvious that everyone should have access to that, that's a great cause to stand behind, and you literally do that. It's called direct action. You have your own political opinions and beliefs about the world, and you do that. You do that. You don't wait for elections. You don't wait for the parliament to have like a vote on a food for people act because that's going to happen. That's not going to happen, people. You have mm. to do it yourself. You have to it's do a, it with other people together. It's a it's a real tragedy that feeding the homeless is political when it should just be a thing. Yeah. I agree. I think. Um, uh, if you're looking to get involved in um, an organization or starting something or you want to just you know, do anything, you've got to look at um, who it's going to benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you immediately you say, oh, it's going to be benefit you know, people in need and comrades, then that's a big thumbs up there, buddy. <laughs> So, so it's like, yeah, so it's like, um, um, like you were saying, like that organization, um, food, not bombs. It's, um, it's a imme the immediate effects is that the hungry are fed. It's a great, it's a great thing you can get involved in. If there isn't anything like that where you are, then, um, you could, uh, and, and you want more comrades such as yourself, you could uh, look into starting, say, a study group. That's actually my next point that I wanted to have a discussion about. Yeah. Like, in, uh, what if there are all the parties suck? What if you have to choose between the Nazis and the Nazis in terms of voting? Mm. And you're like, what the fuck? I don't want to do that. <laughs> what if the food not bombs are actually... It's, it, there is no food not bombs and there is bombs not food. What, what, the, what, what, what do you do? And this is when the interesting part starts, because this mm. is when you get to your own, like, local organizing, and you do your own shit. Ooh, interesting stuff. So, what if I told you that most of American organizers actually did this, like, study groups was a primary way of organizing on the left in the beginning of the 20th century? Hmm. So-called uh, John Reed book clubs, if I recall correctly. Basically, what they did is that they were creating little organizations of people who gathered together in public spaces or usually on their own, you know, in, in, in their own apartments or whatever. And they read a bunch of philosophy books and political science books. Political philosophy books, political economy books, or whatever. And they were reading that and discussing. And uh, getting your own book club is actually pretty cool. Hmm. And I think it's a thing that almost anyone can do. So, what's the premise? You call a bunch of your friends, right? And say, hey, remember when we were talking about, like, because I'm pretty sure that you have some people around you that could be interested in talking about politics. Right? Hmm. Maybe some of them are leftists. Not necessarily like maybe left liberals. And you're like, hey, 
how about we get together and do some reading, do some creative reading club. And what you do is you sit down and you get a bunch of books. In a usual, usually what we mean by when leftists are talking about book clubs, we mean you get a fucking Karl Marx capital, right? <laughs> they get hmm. a chapter one, you read chapter one, you, you become bra big brained, and other big brain people who also read chapter one come to the same place every week and they discuss it and the brains collectively grow to basically overtake the government that's the usual plan basically the brain mass just overwhelms the parliaments and you become the full <laughs> communism arrives that's the usual plan so if you don't and really do Dolph anything you just read right and then At our dolphin comrades help us establish underwater socialism yeah that's basically it but <laughs> uh, if we're on the on the serious note that's actually a very cool thing to do, you know, to read uh, leftist theory, mm. get, uh, like, to try to understand it, and then discuss it with other people also, right? Uh, and you can have people of different, uh, different, like, on different levels of political education who read nothing, or read some things, uh, but I would argue that you could go even further than that, because maybe there are not enough comrades out there where you are. Or you're not a real, like, 100% comrade, and you don't want to de dedicate your time to reading fucking Karl Marx and, like, uh, go deep into fucking Derrida, you know, and research <laughs> fucking French theory uh, all the fucking day, right? You don't want to dedicate your life and all of your weekends to Foucault, which you should do, because Foucault is the best, but uh, <laughs> I love the, my French bold man. French bold man is the best. A shout out to French bold man. So, um, maybe you just get other things. You could do, use the same framework or organization and expand it. What you can do is that you can get together every week to talk about the news and, talk, and call it the political club, you know? And you can have discussions, mm. or you can have debates, or you can have... So it doesn't even... A bunch of stuff it, doesn't just, it doesn't just have to be about uh, reading books. It could be about something centered around politics discussions debates um all that stuff you know study group yeah you, you, exactly yeah. study group and that's hmm. actually a great way to keep discussing politics if you're interested in them and surround you with people who are also interested with it with it right and uh, invite people that you enjoy talking to and who are interested in having this sort of in an organized fashion and uh, prepare every week, find some interesting news pieces, or read together some an article or a book and discuss it, and um, mm. talk about this sort of stuff. And that's great. It's a very cool thing. Yeah. Um, not not that. only is this is this a great way for everybody to learn about theory and then you know putting it into praxis, but it's also a great way to network as well. Mm -hmm. Because your friend will have a friend of a friend who works in a factory, who wants to learn about, you know, the plight of the workers, suddenly you, you know twice as many people as you thought you did who all want the same thing as you do, which is full communism. <laughs> or who are just interested in um, more radical approaches to politics. Or exactly. Or just, yes. the just hate the things that are happening now. Yes. Or something else. Something yeah. they have control over. Yeah. I agree, what? and it's a great thing to do, and I would 100% recommend that. Is there a time mm. for a break, TK? Should we go into the intermission by now? Yeah, perhaps uh, it is time for an intermission. Perhaps we all need to stretch our legs for a minute. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So, this is uh, the intermission, people. We'll be back with you after these messages. So, this episode of Radio Science Podcast has been brought to you by our Patreon supporters and donators. So, I would like to thank everyone who has donated to us this month. This month basically made our year, which is fucking amazing, because we had some nice donations by our comrades. I'd like to mention by name some of our Patreon supporters. There's a bowl of cream and tomato soup, Hard Lenin. Oh, wait, he didn't pledge. Hard Lenin used to pledge, but thanks for pledging the money that you did previously. I was just fucked up because I looked at the thing. 
he, he used to help us, but it doesn't matter. Comrade Gultsov, uh, Molten Keep, uh, and uh, the Proletariat. Thank you very much for getting us your communist dollars. Uh, they help us out a lot, and uh, I'd like to thank also the people who donate to us on Kofi for all the one-time donations. Uh, it's great you're helping us a lot, and mm. we are really thankful. You're keeping thank the you all so much. Lights on. Um, so, are there any announcement that you have, TK? Some stuff to mention, some things to tell the peoples. Uh. Well, I guess um, uh, to make it official, I suppose, uh, May Day, the 5th of May in Melbourne, I will be mm -hmm. there. TK Jones in Melbourne for May Day this year. Um, I, I guess it's a bit of a meetup thing then. Um, I will s see you all in Melbourne for May Day. <laughs> nice. I'll see if I can um, uh, do maybe do some live tweeting or live reporting. Uh, but I'll definitely try to take a lot of footage nice. and catch should, up with all the comrades in Melbourne. You will be in the costume, right? Oh, I'm bringing the mask, yeah, definitely. Nice. You could live stream. That would be really cool if you live stream. Even on YouTube. Actually, they have a really cool live stream feature right now. You can live stream from your phone. It's pretty cool. Ah, I would cool. love to see you out there in the streets. Uh, on my side, are there anything that I would like to say? Well, the, basically, there will be a bunch of sources to all the stuff that we're talking about, all the stuff that we mentioned uh, in the description. So, like, we're going to talk about the labor organizing right after this one, right? And there will be a really cool text to read uh, about, so I recommend that. Uh, am I sound is okay right now? Is it okay now? Yep, okay. you're, you're good now. Uh, so... I don't know when this is going to go live, but I recommend you check out. It's, it doesn't happen yet. I think it's going to happen. Well, I don't know, actually. But basically, I am going to record a Bolshevik Bistro with a host of a show, Spicy Takes, on Zero Books a YouTube channel, uh, <sighs> whose name is Badman Massive. And um, we're going to talk about British politics, uh, pre-Brexit shenanigans, you know, and all the things that are happening there with uh, British yellow vests going fashy and stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. So I recommend you check this out, check out the discussion we had or will have. I'm not sure when this is going to go live. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's basically it. Is there anything else, Dickie, before we can go to music? I think, I think, that, I think everyone's really caught up now. Yeah, great. Um, so the music guest for this Radio Sounds podcast is me. Uh, I put out ah. a I put out a mixtape, an EP, Champagne Socialist, live now on SoundCloud. Uh, it's basically some songs that I've already previewed. Uh, most of them, I think, on the show. Some of them I even published. But check it out. I'm going to play a song called "Love," which is the intro song to the mixtape. Um, and um, yeah, check it out. Hope that you enjoy. This is love by me, the opposite of the music break. <laughs> Поздно, 
Ты уходишь, как поезд, 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 поезд. И одна на перроне дождь и я. Нет, не плакать, дождь, не плакать. Любовь, любовь это прекрасное чувство. Но, очевидно, надо к нему очень серьезно относиться и беречь любовь. So this was Chilled Red uh, Love uh, from the Champagne Socialist EP. You can check it out on the SoundCloud link provided below. Mm -hmm. uh, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a sub. Uh, I would need all the support I need. Share it on Twitter and like get the word out that there is some dank communist beats going on down on Chilled Red SoundCloud. I'm going to post more. I do a bunch of music right now. I have some songs in production. I'm going to we need to it. we need to counteract yep. all of the NCAP rap that's out there. Oh my god. Um, the, <laughs> I don't know about the NCAP rap. I've seen conservative hip-hop. Oh, that NCAP rap exists and it is worse than conservative oh hip-hop. <laughs> I should get into it. I and uh, do some NCAP rap. I should become a SoundCloud rapper proper and do some like uh, fucking slay it on the beat with the child slaves you know <laughs> beats and rhymes oh my god so uh let's get uh, i'm i'm started thinking about end caps and like neo feudalism uh, that we are approaching and i'm like no please i don't want to think about that too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> talking about neo feudalism um Labor organizing. This is the mm -hmm. topic that we're going to cover now, and we're going to finish with that. So, yeah, join so the you've... fucking union. Uh, yes. So, so you've got your study group, and you're understanding the theory. Now it is time to start putting it into practice. Yeah, and because the best that way, includes the best way to do that action. is to yeah yeah best way to do that is join a union. That will be great. Yeah, exactly. Because like. Uh, if we're talking about this one is exclusively left-wing, in my opinion, uh, in our approach, because other things are universal for anyone just interested in politics. And I mm. think it is our task as left-wingers to get everyone engaged in the political process as much as possible, uh, especially the people who are sort of, you know, on the center. Because um, I think engaging in politics is, like, really, really important for everyone, you know? Mm. And... Um, the more people are engaged, the more um, we 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 are winning. Or despite like if that happens, because for us, uh, because we promote democracy, we promote things like um, people getting ownership of their own lives, right? Mm. To the fullest extent, I think engagement in politics on a very deep level is great for our purposes. So, but labor organizing is interesting because. Um, it's usually, I think, in the eyes of a common person, is not seen as a political act, right? It's not really mm. political, usually, for people, or especially on the outside. But uh, if you think about that, um, that's one of the most political things that you can do. Because that's literally um, thinking and working towards making your own, um, like... Uh, oh, wait, my microphone is fucking up, right? How about now? Can you hear me all right? Uh, now? Try... Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Uh, sorry about the quality. I'm, I'm working on improving that. But for the time being, it sucks. So, <laughs> um, 
I believe that uh, labor organizing is really fucking important, and uh, we can't. I I don't think we can provide you with very good advice uh, on terms of what to do exactly, because labor laws and uh, um, unions are varied throughout the world, and we have many mm. people from different countries here, and um, even in one country, in one region, you can have great unions and you could join it in your field of work right in other places you cannot it all depends on where you are and um, you have to do your own research on this regard but there are some things mm. that we can cover so tk could you please tell us a bit about uh, unions in australia so that we can we can like um is it easy well, to join a, a, union? a, f- a first like, a first little technique that i want to point out there um is if you're if you uh, go to work at a workplace and your boss says, Oh, here's the thing you got to sign here. You got to sign here. Here's the union membership thing. You should really look into which union your boss is suggesting you to join. Cause in Australia um, specifically, there's a union called the SDA. They mm-hmm. try to handle retail and fast food workers and they do such a bad fucking job of it that everybody hates SDA. All they do is they collect your dues, and that's it. They're just self-perpetuating. The reason why is because there's a lot of young people who are just joining the workforce who do want to join a union, but think but think all there is is what the boss tells you there is. Mm-hmm. So then the boss says, oh, yeah, join SDA because SDA isn't going to tell me to pay you properly or to let you take toilet breaks. Your boss won't have your best interests at heart because he's trying to make a profit and he's not going to tell you to join the better union. The better union to join would be the one you research into and the one I suggest, which is the Retail and Fast Food Workers Union, if you're going into retail and fast food. And that's the that's the little takeaway technique there, is um, you got to do a little bit little bit of investigating into the into the the union you want to join, to make sure both that it's the right industry for you, um, and that they actually have your interests at heart. Mm-hmm. So if you're you know if you're an an automotive worker and you're trying to join, um. Uh, the the cleaners union, it's uh you might have clicked on the wrong link there. <laughs> you want the automotive manufacturing union. That's the one. But then you got to make sure that you you're in the right automotive manufacturing union because there's the one that's set up oh by the God. company, <laughs> and then there's the one that actually represents the 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 workers. So yeah, um, yeah, just as with the political parties. The whole thing is fucked, and you have to think yeah. hard about this thing. You have to research that. You have to go into, uh, like, um, ask people and uh, Google and think about those things and ask around. And you have to be aware of this sort of thing. And we, unfortunately, like, TK provided some examples of what's happening in Australia in, like, two spheres, right? Mm. But... Like, there are so many fields, and you should do, like, so much research, and, like, maybe in this particular union, this local branch is fucked, and it's shit, you know, and you can't do anything about it. So, like, oh, it's really hard, and you have to do that, and you have to think about that really hard, and um, one thing can I, I can add to that is that be aware of, just, like, on a basic level of what, uh, you, what rights you have as a worker. Um... Mm. Because this actually does tie into um, a podcast we did quite a while ago called Small Praxis. I don't know if we've yeah. mentioned it yet. We have um, Small Praxis was about little things you could do in the workplace in order mm-hmm. to uh, um, try to uh, circumvent the bullshit that your boss will try to you know do to you if they're a really mm-hmm. shitty boss. Um, and some of it was. Um, uh, you know, checking out which union you want to join, that kind of thing. And some of it was to do with um, uh, keeping it under your hat as well. So your union delegate is the one that can go around saying, ah, yes, I'm with the union. But if you 
are about to join the union, it's best to keep it under your hat. Yeah, Until very be careful about what sort of information you're yeah. letting out in terms of labor organizing, because that's they could easily, if they found that, find out, is all of a sudden like in your peaceful like <laughs> McDonald's or whatever, where it's just like everything is going great for everyone uh, in charge, and all of a sudden they're hearing that the fucking communists in the <laughs> communist unions uh, are going to go in and wreck their shit, they will be like. Who the fuck is doing that? Like, as a and boss, how do we get rid of them? How do we get mm. rid of them? Yeah, because that is the thing that happens in some spheres. Even if you get found, if somebody finds out that you are organizing, talking to workers, you know, and doing some stuff, you could get blacklisted and not get a job in the industry anymore because you've unionized everyone, right? You're mm. attempting to do that. So, like, this shit is really, really on you and on the union that you're working with. Mm. You if, you're, if, yeah, union. if you're a worker that's, uh, that wants um, more support to make sure that you're getting, being paid right and that your rights are being protected, very much so, join a union. Mm -hmm. um, if you're wanting to be more active and get more people at your workplace to join and you want to actively try to um improve the conditions and have more union representation that's when your employers are going to start to get scared and yes. that's when you need like at least at least 60 percent of your fellow workers already in the union well yeah that's the point that, and that's in here that's we cannot advise you on the strategy the people yeah. who are here to advise you on the strategy are the people you're working with on the union side. And I mm. recommend, even if you're doing baby steps, go to the union that works with your sphere, to their website, to their information that they provide, to their brochures. Look at the stuff that they are asking you, like advising you to do first. Give them a call, uh, discuss, like, hey, I want to be in a union, I don't really know what to do. That's their job to provide you with all the information and all the resources. And um, and uh, you get to decide for yourself whether you want to do that, deal with that or not. Is it safe? Is it not safe? Way you better? Would, would would you rather stick to whatever's happening now, for now, and just stay stay still, do nothing? Because that's occasionally a thing that you have to do when your like labor laws are fucked, when your mm. unions are shit, and where your boss is an exploitative dict dictator. You know. It's it saddens me to hear that there's people that, that 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 there's places in the world where if one worker says, "Hey, cover me," and, and he goes to, you know, take a toilet break, uh -huh. that they could get fired for that, and yeah. that there's no union representation to help. It just saddens me. But hopefully, hopefully, if you take a few lessons from uh, this podcast, we'll be able to turn that around. Yeah, and hopefully. We'll, yeah, and. Um... Talking about like, like the stuff they did in Amazon in France and Germany, they went on a giant strike because they literally were not allowed to take, uh, talk to mm. each other at work, uh, take uh, breaks. They had to uh, do their you know oh. uh, do their thing in bottles because <laughs> it was that fucked. And mm. um, they were strike. They went they went on a strike, you know. And uh, people mm. in America went on a strike and minimum wage. In the Amazon went up to fifteen dollars, not because will... of the generosity of fucking Jeff Bezos, but because of the struggle of the workers. That's mm. the thing. This is one hundred percent on workers, and this is great. Mm. I, I will. So, I yeah. will state um, for anybody that's apprehensive about joining a union, and then oh, if I'm in a union, then I'm going to have to go and strike. Striking is one of the last options that a union will take. Any yeah. good union will talk to the boss and say, look, this is what we need and this is what we want. Let's, you know, can we get this? It's, they, they will talk to your employer. They will discuss. And then if the boss is stubborn, then um, more you know, talking will happen. And then if the boss starts to retaliate, then a strike will happen. Striking mm -hmm. is a big thing, 
and um, you know you'll you'll strike, you'll set up picket lines, never cross a picket line, God damn it. Um, exactly. But those are actions that are usually taken after talks break down. Yeah, because but every most every of step of the way the up, is loads yeah, of shit. every step of the way shit. up until that point, the union will have your back because society is built by the workers and the unions want to protect the workers as much as possible any good union will have your back not only mm -hmm. up until the strike but during it i agree and, es especially uh, during a strike because yeah. you're not working um when yeah. when you're in a union you're looking at you know fellow un fellow union members are brothers and sisters they'll um jump in front of a bus for you sometimes in the really radical unions. It's, uh, uh, I'm getting a bit preachy, but it's like, you know, uh, the one big union, the IWW, it's more like the one big family at times. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are in this together and you union allows you to see that because th this is the place where people are actually discussing the issues of the work on the workplace. They actually like, um, thinking about conditions they're thinking about things that you need to work uh, to be safe at work to mm. be productive and uh, get as much of the uh, like basically not get overexploited and uh, this is why unions are just amazing and great and you should think about joining them with all the negative mm. stuff we said about risks right if you actually manage to be to join it that will be so much help to you when you mm. need it like, Although there are crazy. risks, the benefits are greater. Yeah, I agree. And I would like to address you to a very interesting article that was published in socialsworker.org. Um, uh, yes, there's homework for this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not homework. I'm just like a nice case study. And uh, yeah. basically, it's, writ it's written by Dennis uh, Kosuth, who is... Um, a Chicago nurse uh, working for Chicago Public Schools, member of teach Chicago Teachers Union and National Nurses United. And um, basically, the article is a case study about a particular um, particular uh, hospital where they were organizing. The, this particular person was organizing um, because uh, there was an issue, big issue is overtime. Basically, uh, the this, this hospital was understaffed and uh, because that's like cheaper for um, the hospital owners to understaff mm. and just make other people work overtime. And they were talking about how they did the work. And it's a long process that is more than a year long of uh, like they started with a petition, then they moved on to this and they did that and then they organized with the union and then the union refused to strike because of, uh, of this reason and then they basically uh get, got 90 percent of nurses on board and uh, didn't like no one signed up for overtime because it's voluntary and they appealed to their right not to do overtime that it was in their contracts and the bosses were like fucking shocked and then they did that and this and so basically it's a long long it's not just like you all of a sudden, get out a red flag, and then you're like, yes, comrades, the revolution, we shall take over the workplace, and it will be perfect. <laughs> and, like, like uh, an armored car grows below you, and you go bold, and you, like, have a beard all of a sudden, and a jacket, and you're shouting. No, that's not the thing. It's not, it doesn't happen like that. You don't become mm -hmm. Lenin all of a sudden. But you do have a bunch of things that are like you do have a, a lot of things to do on your side on the on, like in terms of organizing how to progressively escalate you know actions and because it's it's very great and uh, how to work with people who are like fucking racists like what about your racist colleagues how do you get them on board and what do you do about the reactionary views like what if you have an anti-communist on your uh, on your team. What do you do about that? When they see any labor as like parasites by mm. the fact that you are out there saying, hey, do you want to have better conditions? And he's fucking screaming at you saying that you're a fucking commie or whatever. That's a possibility that could happen. Well, um, read this article. It will provide you some feel on, of, on what uh, a, 
labor organizing is, how could it work, and how could you try to do it, right? So recommend 100%. And uh, the whole actual socialistworker.org is not that bad of a publication. It's Trotskyist, but I still recommend this point, your political opinions to take a look at it. Um, it's pretty cool. Links down below. Uh, so yeah, and yeah, don't forget mm. that you must uh, like keep all the pay like payment slips that you get. Don't throw them away. Never do that. All the mm. transactions, all the documents that you have between your like uh, with your employers, keep that. If if you have to that? sign a contract with your employer, read the contract all the way through. Keep a copy. And uh, especially yes. in Australia, if you sign a contract that says minimum 20 hours a week and they start not giving you 20 hours a week, you refer them to them to that goddamn contract. And if they still don't give you your proper hours, then you, you call up that union and they will tear that, uh, that boss and new asshole. Exactly. <laughs> also... Uh, look into uh, if you have issues at work. Uh, think harder on how can you solve that. Contact unions. Talk to your fellow workers. Low key. Mm. Don't don't ask them to join the union. Talk to them about the issues. That's very important. Uh, keep everything low key and keep everything. Uh, keep the discussions away from the ears of the um, of the bosses and managers. Um, remember that it's not in their interest for you to talk about issues at work. And uh, also, one more thing is that uh, look into um, maybe there are some basically um, people who are experts on labor laws, right? Uh, the um, attorneys who provide free consultations to workers. Mm -hmm. There are many organizations that do that, and you can call them and ask them a question. Hey, this is the ha thing that's happening. Uh, do I have anything? Can I do anything about it? And they can give you some answers on what to do about it. So again, mm. Google is your main source on this one. And uh, yeah, for my uh, for my Australian comrades, your local trades hall is the place to go for um, labor law stuff. Yeah, contact you. Go to your trades hall. Um, find people there. Talk to them. Explain. And uh, yeah. It's it, it, there is. It's really hard to give any advice, as I said, but that's the general thing that we can provide. Is there anything else to keep? I think um, we've covered a lot of stuff. Um, if people mm -hmm. have questions, post them down in the comments below, and we'll try to answer them, or we'll answer them in the next um, Radio Silence podcast. Yeah, we can do that during um, the intermissions. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Feel free to answer, uh, ask any question, and uh, thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, we love you. We adore you for all your support. We adore you for all the communist dollars. Thank you very much for everything that you do with us. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, post this episode everywhere you can. Post it in your favorite Discord server. Um, tell your friends and family about the show. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that's it. I think that's it. Is there anything else to get? I don't think. We can say all goodbyes uh, now. Join your union. Talk to your friends as much as possible. Stay networked and connected. And look out, look after your fellow comrade. Yeah. I think that's a great way to finish this. Thank you again very, very much for all the support. Thank you for listening. Radio Silence out.